Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are across the known world. And welcome to another amazing interview with the Crown Between Two Roses. I'm Countess Beatrice and with me today is Duchess Eva, who will be doing our acknowledgement of country. Good gentles, we come here together in the spirit of fellowship, deepening of our skills, sharing of our knowledge, and a shared interest in the search to find truth through experimental archaeology and historical inquiry. It is in that context that I, Duchess Eva, and Countess Beatrice, on behalf of our kingdom, acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands upon which we gather. We recognize their continuing connection to the land and culture, and we pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging, and the elders from other communities who might be here and watching today. Thank you very much. Thank you. And today we are so excited to welcome Sean and Nisa, Rex and Regina of Artemisia. Yes? Yes. Thank you for yes. having us. Thank you. Welcome, Majesties. Thank you. We're very excited. We have had uh, Sean, yourself on here before with Sir Joel. Um, yep. Just as Always a, a delight. Yeah, one on one interview. But we're excited to have you on as Crown. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, it's it's been a crazy couple of years, and uh, we just happen to happen to be here while you guys are still doing this. Absolutely. So, uh, when was your crown tourney? Go ahead. You talking? We're talking. Uh, so we had crown in uh, July. Uh, that was the first time that the first opportunity we had once. Uh, once, once we were allowed to have events in person again uh, in the U.S. Uh, in North America, um, and it was one of those things where between between like April and May, um, you know, there was so many rapid changes with um, with the vaccine being released and the COVID numbers coming down, and 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 then we were able to have events, and then it was like you can have events, but only up to 150, and then like and then there's just so many rapid changing changes happening all at once. Um, that uh, finally, right about uh, middle of May, uh, they decided to go ahead and do uh, Crown at the first in-person event that, that we were gonna do. Um, so we typically have uh, five months as Prince and Princess uh, to get ready. Um, I think Lockhock, um, you guys had been on the same schedule or are you guys doing, doing that as well? We have okay. two months. Oh yeah, so that's what, that's what we ended up with. We ended up with two months, uh, which for us is a pretty quick turnaround. Um, but with us having done this before, it was, it was a lot easier for us to kind of fire up the machine and, and get things going. Um, but it was, for, you know, for our kingdom, it was a pretty, pretty quick turnaround. Uh, so we, we had crown in July and, and stepped up in September. Excellent. Now, uh, we always, we have a, a traditional start to our interviews generally, but Sean, we've heard your SEA origin story previously. So feel free to yeah. give us the Reader's Digest version, but especially your Majesty Nisa, if you would tell us your SEA origin story, <laughs> that would be very exciting. So I started, well, it started with a divorce, not SEA related, <laughs> and a roommate. And she um, had been to a couple SEA events, just we were young. So it was the uh, going to dress in funny clothes and mostly just party, honestly. Um, and um, through that and over time, I eventually got involved with um, some other of the households, not directly, but indirectly, um, and eventually came upon Sean's through Timmer, of all people, because so Sean is Timmer's fault. Yeah, that's Timmer's fault. And um, here we are. That's the, that's the Reader's Digest version, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys met at an event? Kind of. Um, sort of, but... We actually, we actually met at, uh, at a movie theater when, when, when we were all going to, going to movies with Timmer. Again, with, it's all his fault. Um, so it was the first time we'd actually met. And she had just been to an event that I had not been at. Um, and then uh, we started, started hanging out. And... Um, uh, so but that was 2003 ish. Um, so this is somewhat new to her, but even with that, you know, she's coming up on, on 20 years uh, playing at, at a, at a much deeper level. 
um because it was is as soon as we started dating um she got, she got into it pretty quick uh kind of kind of jumped in with both feet there yeah that's kind of how that goes though so aside from the relationship what was it that sort of drew you into the SCA? um honestly it was just someplace to go to meet people it was another it was it was something to do um again i was going through a divorce um and i had this roommate that had done it before our group of friends that were going and so i just jumped in the car um and it was just again it was just something to do um and and i met sean 2003 a few years after i started playing maybe a year or two after um and then at that point then it was more being involved and autocratting and doing feasts and um and just supporting the household so yeah it's awesome yeah. that you got so drawn into it through that as well because I do know that there's quite a few people that are very involved but their partners aren't so much so it's mm -hmm. awesome that you you know jumped in with both feet yeah I uh totally did <laughs> it's still I mean it's still I I would say that well, after being crowned now, I mean, it's just as much my thing as it is his. Um, obviously, obviously, I'm committed to the SCA or should be committed. Not sure which way that should go, but um, yeah, I enjoy it. So when we had we had done a stint as our uh, local landed Baron and Baroness uh, from 2006 to 2008, um, and that's definitely an experience that is going to draw you in and make you more active in a lot of different uh different areas of the society um it, it's definitely it's a good good sort of uh primer for uh for sitting in royal throne um so of course and then he won crown the first time right after well the first time for me right after that um and then i was exchequer for our local barony for a little bit and then he won crown again um so seem to have a pattern going on i don't know i mean she, she said i can fight so if you say i can fight i'm gonna fight <laughs> that's how it works and, right and then right and then i kind of i kind of can't not at that point so if you give me the green light i'm gonna go <laughs> how different did you find uh reigning as baron and baroness to reigning as crown and what were the differences it's it's quite a bit different actually um the tenure is of course well, well i shouldn't say of course but for here it's two years um and so we did that we um with him being a crown contender when we stepped up as baron and baroness before the votes came in he had to make some promises that we were committed to the barony um that we would not be entering crown during that time period which was fine because we were and that was not a problem um he fought for Karen and got her her duchy before that happened um so I got to kind of sit on the sidelines and watch her reign um as much as you can um to try to understand some of that and then the the baronial tenure was it was a really awesome experience um it's in some ways it's more of a commitment and some ways it's less um mostly more just because it is a longer period of time and um and yeah you're not you don't have to go to other people's events but we all support each other and there's quite a few um baronies within driving a, a day event driving of this um distance so it's it was a lot of fun um and it was a really good experience and it helped me understand a little more of the business side of it. Um, and then, um, so that helped me decide if I felt like I could do something more. Um, being crown, can, it, it's more traveling, more long distance traveling and more compact in a short period of time. <laughs> so. Um, yeah, so, uh, yeah. Be, you know, the biggest difference, I mean, the best way to describe the two is that being crowned as a sprint and being barren is a, is a marathon. Um, it's, it's two years, um, 
and you know you you're, you don't have the same kind of frantic pace that you do as the crown because you know we're like since we like this is the first weekend that we've really had off since July. Um, wow. Even even for the things that were not SCA events, uh, there's there's just been something going on um, always, you know. And then when you're trying to trying to fit in visits with with friends, um, you know, on on the few off weekends that you have, but yeah, it's like pretty much jam packed. Um, you know, but we we're we're very careful not to not to consume, you know. 26 events in that that six months um we we, we keep that number of events that we go to to a uh, to a certain number uh so that we're not trying we're, we're not getting burnt out on that well and we have i mean we have two kids and granted now they're older but they still need our attention they still need our time um in fact you know nine o'clock sean's gotta go pick up our son so yeah. from work he's got his first job he's 16 it's crazy <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, we still have to balance some of that stuff out, but, um, it's been fun in a way we've been able to involve them in different ways this time that we weren't able to when they were younger. So it's just a matter of trying to figure out a balance. I know for me, one of the other differences between being landed Baron and being crown is, is, uh, the baronage is this kind of weird mix of church and state. It's this hybrid mix of, you know, being an officer and being, uh, royalty or nobility, um, you know, because, you know, as, as the crown, all these events that we go to are going to happen whether we're there or not. And, you know, we, we, any event that we go to, we just show up and it, it's a bonus um, having the crown there. And, you know, we get to, we get to hand out, hand out awards and, but, you know, we're, we're kind of, we're kind of extra in that way. Whereas, you know, in the barony, whatever events that you're hosting throughout the, the year, you're an integral part of, um, hosting those events and, you know, as Baron of Baroness, you need to be at those, those events that you're hosting and, uh, and, and you're a lot more intimately involved in the, the business side of, of what we do. Um, cause it, it is a, a lot more like being an officer, um, not just, you know, figurehead royalty sort of thing. So there's, there's a lot more involvement, um, and, and you do, you get to see the business side of it. And I think, um, for her being able to do that before we stepped up as crown gave her a really good glimpse into both sides of that, the, the, the royalty and nobility side and the business side. Um, Cause we tend to be business oriented crowns, um, you know, kind of making sure that, that the kingdom functions the way it's supposed to and working with our kingdom officers to, to get things going. And I think being, being Baroness uh, for her certainly had helped that. Absolutely. While we're on that track, because we are in a kind of unique time now where I think it's a really good time of opportunity to seek out new members and nurture our local groups and especially focus on retention in our local groups. I think anyone that's worn the crown sort of has a, an eagle eye view on the health of the kingdom and keeps an eye on that. But what would you say your advice is on how to nurture your local groups? Um. Part of it is just keeping people involved. Um, allow for, allow for that. Um, encourage. Um, I took. We had one, and and I have to say, we have one new player that, <laughs> she's so excited and it's so infectious. And so I went ahead and put her and one of her daughters on my retinue um, as a lady in waiting, um, just to continue that that excitement and that I want her to spread her excitement. Um, and yeah. I think by putting her on my retinue that assists with that, um, gives her a job. Um, cause I know a lot of times, although she's created her own jobs, um, <laughs> she's, she's that excited. Um, she has, she has started a dance guild again. I'm not a guild yet, but like during the pandemic, um, so I really encourage anyone that you can find that's new, find something that they enjoy and encourage them to do it and support them in that as best you can, or find someone that can and, and connect them with that person. Nice. Yeah, it, it's been interesting that um, we, we have had a number of people that yeah. have joined during the, during the pandemic. Um, and so a lot of their experience has been just online, like, you know, our, our kingdom had done 
Um, a lot of uh, virtual events uh, during the pandemic, our, our previous crowns, Damon and Veronique, um, were like really kind of at the forefront of that. Um, and so, you know, we had these virtual events and so people could actually kind of attend court, but it, it's very different when you actually get to do it in person. Um, but it's been really interesting to see the number of people that, that um, have actually come to the SCA uh, during this time when, you know, we, we really can't do anything. And so for us, it's just been, you know, one of our, our priorities has been trying to, trying to get back to in-person events now that we can um, as much as possible. And I, you know, I'm, you guys are seeing that now with, um, you know, having had a couple of crowns and now you have some travel restrictions and, you know, there's, there's this thing where, you know, like we got to have coronation. And then after that, I was like, okay, can we have crown? Cause for us, we, it's a month from crown to coronation. So it's like, let's get, let's get crown done so we can have, have our heirs. Um, Cause we definitely wanted to secure our heirs so that they could be part of these decisions that are happening because there's still a lot of COVID related stuff that is happening that we just feel much more comfortable having that extra set of eyes on it um, to, to kind of help us with those things. But, you know, it's like, well, we had an event and, and that was cool, but can we have another event? You know, and then it's like, but really, can we? Because, you know, as soon as you plan something, there's always that chance that something is going to get shut down, right? Well, and I've been referring <clears throat> to it and I, I, I almost feel like this term's almost overused, but it's it's true. Um, it's almost a PTSD response where you get all excited and then you're like, but it may not happen. And you really don't believe it's gonna happen until you're standing there. And even then it's a little bit surreal because of of what we've all been through um, in, in mundane life as well as in our SCA lives. And so, um, there's something about being able to actually do these face-to-face um, in-person events that has been amazing. I think it's brought back a lot of appreciation. Um, I think those that have stuck it out are, are truly, um, it, Grateful. it has taken away so much from so many of us. And so to actually be able to spend time with our friends again, has been amazing and we took for granted before and and I don't think that any of us or the generation that's that's part of this will ever forget that yeah even even the you know the first event that we were able to have back which was our crown um you know we we had entered because we 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 felt that it would be best to have somebody that had some experience um on the thrones at this time because all of these transition reigns are going to be super hard um, some of them are going to be, you know, shortened timelines like ours. Um, but there's, you know, there's so much about what's going on right now that, that I, I think it definitely helps to have some experience. Um, you know, but at the same time, going into this list, when we got to the finals, um, I, you know, I, I knew that the person that I was in the finals with was a quality fighter. In fact, he, like he won the crown after us. Right. So like there was, there was, it, it was far more emotional winning this crown than it has been in, in, in any of the other crowns I've won because there's like there's so much writing on 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 what had happened and then you know you kind of prepare yourself for the possibility that you're facing a quality opponent and he could he could win the day and then to actually you know have won and and just like it was just a, a moment that was just really overwhelming um and so we're trying to you know we're, we're trying to normalize events again I mean like get things back on track and you know like like to get our crown scheduled and then even our coronation to, you know our step down to, to get that scheduled um and, and to be able to to just do and it's kind of one event at a time um because you just you know because we, we've been prepared from the beginning to you know if we need to go back to doing virtual events you know if we have a, a, a spike that shuts things down we just know that that's a possibility um, and we're prepared for that, but we're also cautiously optimistic. Mm. Like, you know, we're going to keep planning events and we're going to keep hoping that we can do. And like everyone, every, every event that we have, you know, gives us more faith that we can do another one. Um, but it's still, there's still that apprehension. It's still a little, um, you know, a little cautious. Uh, and at the same time, it's like people have got to learn how to people again. Um, cause we've been. Yeah. I mean, I think it's also worth noting that if people aren't ready, that's okay too. Yes. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Um, 
we've had a few people that just aren't ready yet for whatever reason, whether it's, they're just, they just need to be that extra cautious because of their own health or someone that they live with, or just not ready to people yet. Right. Like that's a thing. Um, I'm having a hard time. Um, I am not the people person Sean is. And so, um, my, I will, I, I will put this out there because I'm a person and crown was really hard for me. And it's not because of who won. It's not because of the day, because I love the people that won. Um, by the end of the day, I was so peopled out and, um, I'm, I'm emotional anyways. Right. So I have my own anxiety and things that I deal with on a daily basis, and this is not helping. Um, but, um, I, I don't regret having Sean and her crown and, and, and I'm good with being in the situation I'm in. It's just that it was really overwhelming. And by the end of the day, I lost my shit, right? Like I started crying and I couldn't stop. And then I thought I shut my daughter's fingers in the door and then that did not help. And then I thought my phone got run over and that didn't help either. Everything is fine, her fingers and my phone. But in the <laughs> moment, like I was done. I was so done. I went home after crown. We went back to the hotel. I cried. I went to bed. Like that was it. I was done or not the hotel. We stayed at somebody's house, but I just was done. And, yeah. um, so I get it. I, I get that this is really, it can be really overwhelming. Um, and I just want to let people know that it's okay. It's okay. If it's too much, it's okay to take, to go to an event and then take some time or to not go at all. It's okay. It's yeah, definitely I, I, I've been, yeah, I've been saying it since the beginning of this whole thing that, um, you know, you, you do what you have the capacity to do. Yeah. And, you know, for, for me and, and for you guys doing this show, um, I know that, you know, the, these things and being able to share these experiences and, and being able to do these online things, it's not, it's not that we have more capacity. It's like doing the coach's corner and, and doing the show that I did with Cal, like that actually fueled my capacity. Um, it got me excited about talking about fighting again. And, and I'm sure it's been very much the same for you guys where, you know, even though it's a lot, um, this is one of those things that helps keep you going. And, and, but the, the statement is still true now, as we get back to in-person events, do what you have the capacity to do and don't feel like you should be doing more because somebody else is doing more. Um, because again, it's not that I have more, it's like this sort of thing has, has fueled that capacity for me. It's what's kept me going. It's not because I'm sort of, sort of super, <laughs> superhero. Um, like it, it's, I can do this because of the, the very much like what you guys are doing. Um, so do what you have the capacity to do. Don't feel like you have to be anything more. Don't let anybody shame you into not going to events. Appreciate the events that you can go to. Um, and yeah, you're going to go to an event and you're, you're going to have some apprehension and then you're going to get there and you're going to have a good time. And you're going to realize that you miss the people and being in contact with them and being able to hug them and touch them again. And that is going to want you to make it, make you want to do it again and to have another event because you understand how much you missed it. Yeah. And in saying that, it's also important to understand that your energy levels are so different now. Um, that was one of the big things that I recognized from the events that I'd been to that I would get to the end of the day and I was exhausted from doing nothing at an event. It was yeah. weird because I usually do a lot of running around. Um, yeah. So having that's that, kind of what happened to her at Crown, you know, because I mean, hosting Crown is just as exhausting as winning Crown. Um, maybe even more so. I mean, you guys have you guys have both been there, so you, so you know. Um, yeah, I mean, hosting Crown is is exhausting. Um, I mean, just there's there's so much going on with the list, and and you're trying your best to make sure you get the list that, that it goes right. You know, that you have a good you know, clean, well-contested list, um, and that, that you got the right vectors at the end. And, you know, until it's all over, it's just really hard to, to, to know what's going on. And then, you know, whatever awards you, you know, had planned to do because it's a big thing. Um, yeah, it's, it's a lot. And, um, and when we're not used to that kind of emotional expenditure and then as, as crown again, like, we don't have a choice. 
I mean, we like that emotional expenditure is that's coming out one way or another because <laughs> there are things that just have to get done. And um, and yeah, everybody's everybody's capacity for that kind of peopling and the emotional capacity is just um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's a perishable skill, right? Um, we we we're not practiced at it. <laughs> and, uh, I mean. All right. This is a good opportunity, though, right? Because it's it's easy to show your virtue and your courtesy when everything's great. It's it's hard to show your great courtesy when you're in times of, of anxiety or struggle. So you know, now is the time to put our money where our mouth is, and yeah. you know, do the best that you can and show empathy for others. Because I completely understand that feeling of you know being anxious when you get there or or before you get there, even. Um, well, I, I had that before the pandemic, place. so you can imagine after, like, yeah. it's crazy, it's hard, and again, I, I mean, Sean doesn't fight without asking me first, like, don't get me wrong, <laughs> he didn't just be like, oh, honey, I'm gonna go fight Crown, and if I win, you're just, you're too bad, so sad, like, <laughs> it's a decision that we make, and it's a commitment that I make, um, but it is hard sometimes, so. Who mm -hmm. okay. joining us? Oh, this is Quinn. This is Quinn. This is my girl. Yeah. Aww. And my girl's under the. Oh, you guys appreciate this. Come on. That's Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> and, so we have top dogs. And this is Eleanor. Eleanor is a full bred red healer. She's Australian cattle dog. So that's my little. And Quinn is red healer mix. So. My, little, my little bingo doggy. <laughs> All right, clean up. All right, Angel. Uh, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Not exactly. It's almost like being kept out of food. Yeah, for the most part, for the most part, though, it's been it's been what we expected. I mean, we came in eyes wide open. Um, you know, our predecessors they had no idea that this was going on because when they went crown October two years ago, there was like there was there was no inkling of this at all. In fact. Um, right before this all happened we had we had a baronial event here and then we were supposed to have coronation here the next weekend and we had our baronial birthday here like not a care in the world no masks nothing i mean covid was something that was happening somewhere else and then a week later everything yeah. was shut down like yeah. done gone for for a year and a half i mean we like from from nothing to well nothing I mean, for, from not a care in the world to to not being able to do this and not knowing how long it was going to be. And at first, it was like, oh, you know, I'm going to be out of school for 30 days or, you know, whatnot. And then, you know, you're six months into it. And it's like, I, I guess we're doing this then. Um, so, I mean, it, it, it happened that fast. But we we knew coming into this, uh, we knew what we were in, in for. Uh, we knew all the possibilities. Um, and it's been pretty much what we expected it to be. Um, <laughs> It is. It has been a business-oriented rain. Um, getting, getting a lot of the business done that, that wasn't able to get done while we were in shutdown because there was just no time to do anything or no event, no events to do it at. Um, and you know, kind of, kind of stabilizing things a little bit. Um, you know, like I said, not you know, no, no, no fault to our predecessors or to the, the Kingdom of Seneschal. Um, they what they did, um, them and our our uh, their herald uh, Fiametta, our calendar deputy. Um, them being able to do the online events the way that they did and to keep us all connected for 18 months was nothing short of a miracle. Um, and it was a Herculean task for sure. I mean, and, and they, they kept it going. And so it was, you know, but at the same time, there's no events to go to. And now all of a sudden we can't. And so it's, you got to transition into that. Do you anticipate doing any online events? We're hoping not to. <laughs> Um, we would love to continue to see, uh, classes pop up every once in a while and, and have allow that access. Um, we have really tried to make sure that our courts are available to people that just can't make the events for whatever reason. Um, as we all know, there's sometimes there's just simple reasons, like simple everyday reasons why we can't make events, right? I mean, stuff comes up, life happens. Um, and then on top of that, you throw in anxieties of COVID and people being sick from COVID. Um, 
And so we had already started the process of trying to make sure our courts were online and now we're really pushing to try to improve that process. Yeah, that's one of those things that we've definitely learned throughout the pandemic is, you know, the technology that's available to make, um, make courts uh, more accessible. Um, so we don't expect that we're going to do any virtual events during our reign. Um, uh, we were prepared for that possibility coming into it. We, we were looking at a mix of, you know, if you just can't get a site for your event, then we can look at doing a, doing a virtual event. But so far, it's looking like things are going to be moving forward to, to be able to have in-person events. But, you know, if something pops up, um, then we can, we, we are prepared to do that. It was always, always an option for us, but we're, all, we're definitely trying to transition back to uh, in-person events. And again, you know, like she was saying, um, we, we've been able to see, you know, in a lot of the interviews that have happened over the last couple of years, we, we've heard people talking about how to make things more accessible. Um, we had been live, live streaming uh, some of our events previously, but now we're looking into um, our, like our social media office is looking into getting AV equipment um, to be able to, to make this a little bit easier and something that is, that is going to be through the social media office, right? Um, I happen to have a, a laugh mic, um, a remote mic. Um, and so for our coronation, um, I was mic'd up the whole time. Uh, and so I was live streaming on my personal page with the, with the mic on. So even the, so anybody that was in a proximity of me, um, you could hear that audio uh, going on there. And it was some of the people that like, for some of that, people could hear it better on the live stream than they could if you were in court. Because if you're at the back of the court, like, what's he saying? What's going on there? But with having the having the mic on, you know, it's, it's you know, something you have to be cautious about because uh, you can hear everything. Um, <laughs> be careful what you say. It's on the internet forever. <laughs> it's on the internet forever. Yes. Um, so you gotta, gotta be careful of that. Actually at, at, at Crown, um, I had the mic on me as well. And I was, I was chatting with, our air sits right next to me. I was kind of covering little, little things. So and I was able to just kind of turn it off while I talked to him real quick and then turn it back on. Um, but those are some of the things that we can do to make things more accessible. Um, that I think that we've learned throughout the pandemic that, you know, not only we can be doing, but, but perhaps we should be doing as well because it, it's easy enough to do. And I know some people say like, well, it, it, you should be there if you want to see the thing that's not always possible. And I also think, um, I think you see some of the best and most awesome things. And I think that that allows for people to experience it and say, Hey, that looks kind of cool. I would like to be a part of that. And I think it's another way of us bringing in new people. Um, and also I love, I love the classes that we've done online. Um, again, another way to bring in new people. Um, online classes are neat, but to let those people know that they actually could have real live access to these people and hands-on experience with these um, techniques or whatever the class is, is another really good tool for us to use to bring people in. Yeah, yeah we, we, we did our Kingdom Arts and Sciences competition uh, online last year um and it worked really really well um and you know while there's no substitute for being able to you know go to a competition like that and see you know see the, the arts in person um there's so much that we could do prior to the event where we can prejudge the the the, the arts online and then we can go to the event we can actually talk to the artists about what they're doing and and have that conversation with them instead of flipping through documentation as fast as we can to try to try to vet what we're what we're seeing and whether or not they're actually you know, using good sources. Um, and so that's that's something we're actually looking at um, if for our competition next year is possibly using some of those online advantages. Um, and, and again, it's one of those things like we never would have used it before, but when that's all we had, you know, we made it work. And now, we're, you know, we're like, oh, no, th this could totally be a thing um this this could really really help out um with what we're doing um so we've learned so much uh through all of this um that i think you know we're, we're hoping to be able to put into place uh and to be able to take advantage of in the future 
Excellent. I am Sorry. curious. Sorry, I am Go curious. Um, the I've, I've had some interesting discussions around uh, live streaming and putting items online like that. And there's a definite fear of judgment and putting people up on that worldwide scale, in, really, especially if they're if it's in the, the list field. Um, what would you say to people who have those hesitations? I think especially on the list field, I think that's been out there forever, like long before court or... Um, video recording classes I mean these these fighters have been recording themselves since VHS or you know as soon as they could and had the ability there have been at least some fighters that have um, in fact our other monitor is sitting on a VCR tape of some of Sean's fighting or some of his friends fighting um, and so I think as far as that goes I think also with the idea that a sports mentality is a little bit different than a art mentality. Um, I don't, I don't see that ever being an issue. And really, if someone doesn't want their stuff up, all they have to say is, please don't put that up yeah. and it can be kept private. Yeah. Yeah. As, as fighters, we, I can tell you, we are not at all aware that, um, I mean, we might see a camera, but we're not, not at all concerned about, um, you know, well, maybe I should take this shot because the whole world is watching on, on Facebook. Um, that just doesn't come into our conscious. I mean, we've been doing this long enough that, you know, we, we call the blows as best you can, you can call them. And it just, you know, it, it, it just doesn't, it doesn't impact us. Um, you just, you just, you're just fighting. I mean, there's, there's, there's enough to worry about in the fight itself as, as Eva can tell you, I, mean, I got I got my own problems. You know, like I I got this this person who's trying to do me bodily harm. So maybe I'm not worried about uh, you know how 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 good my tunic looks on Facebook. I mean, within our rules as well, is it, it's an honor bound system. So everyone was pretty concerned about that beforehand. I think the main thing that people worry about in fighting, and I have heard these conversations recently with things being streamed more regularly, is it's about the people not wearing the helmet making the calls, which is always been an issue but I agree it does cause people anxiety but if you take the field and judge your blows as best you can at least you can maintain your honor that way you know the people who outside of the helm do not have the capacity or ability to judge a good blow well and I think that I think well I don't I don't know about other kingdoms um but I know that we worked really hard at Crown, especially coming out of a pandemic and um, out of a time when practice was at a premium, if happening at all, because of the situation, um, to make sure that the observers did understand what was going on and to encourage communication among the fighters, um, not trying not to um, interfere with the list itself but just so that everyone can know what's going on. Um, the other part of that being, we are, as Eva pointed out, an honor-based system. And if you are making the calls the best you can, you should be okay. Um, th there is the occasional misunderstanding, no matter who the fighter, um, that it happens, um, whether it's the fighter not feeling something or the person sending the blow, maybe it was flat and you can't see that on the video, right? Um, but I think overall, as long as we keep up the communication and the talking, I think it'll be okay. And, and I know there will be those occasional instances, but I really, really, truly believe they will be occasional. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that, was, that was something we had seen at our, our coronation. Um, uh, is that coming out of this and getting back into tournament and you know and a lot of the, the first tournaments that we're having are crown tournaments so we're coming out of nothingness and we're going to the absolute peak of competition in our sport um and one of the things that i think we're seeing pretty universally is you know fighting is a perishable skill right and so there's been a lot of 
uh, there's been a lot of poor execution, a lot of poor delivery, um, because people's, you know, fighters, their, their, their mechanics are not, um, where they were, especially if they've been sitting around for two years, um, <clears throat> their mechanics are just not as crisp as, as they were a couple of years ago. And so when you have poor mechanics, then what you end up with is somebody getting hit with something that's marginal at best. And the fighter that it receives the blow just you know, is genuinely calling that they were not hit, they were not struck with what they had expected to get struck by before, um, because because of poor delivery. Um, and so we we made a pretty strong point uh, in this ground to um, to encourage communication um, from the from the get go, um, and that was one of the things that we did talk to our marshals about. Um, you know, just letting them know that we would, um, I mean, we, we used a, a, a phrase that I'd heard in the West and it's um, location and orientation, right? If we see a shot that has, that is in a good legal location and it has good orientation where the blade is on, um, if the, if the two fighters work it out and they discuss it and they agree that, that there's, that the fight, you know, the shot was either, you know, taken or not, that's fine. But if, if you get struck in that manner and you don't recognize it at all, um, that was the point where we were going to stop the fight and just in, encourage that conversation. Um, and this is something that, again, we uh, that I'd, I'd picked up during the pandemic years is we use that as a mechanism to encourage a conversation rather than an accusation. Because um, so often when 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 the, the when we stand on the sidelines, and again, the people that don't fight, they have no idea what we're doing. Right. They have no idea how to call this. They, they have no idea. You know, it's like, well, you're supposed to get, you know, you're supposed to fall down when you got hit. And that guy got hit. So what happened? Um, and, you know, so we, we have an obligation to make sure that the populace at large, especially at Crown, where 90 percent of the people that are standing around have nothing to do with the list. They're not in the list at all. Um, and so we have an obligation to make sure that they understand that the list has been fought cleanly and has been well contested. Um, and that all the opponents that are in the list um, understand. And we had a situation in one of those, one of our um, semi fights where the two fighters were able to kind of work things out. But, um, you know, I, I walked out on the field and I said, it's not enough that you know that it's fine. Everybody else needs to know it's fine. And, and so we need to make a, as visible a display of that to let, you know, for people to understand that, you know, I didn't throw that shot right. And I don't expect my opponent to take it. Um, so that was something that, that we did and it was based largely on, yeah, poor execution that we've seen. And there's going to be, there's going to be a lot of that, uh, for some time, actually. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, no, that's, that's awesome. It's, uh, it's definitely something that has been highlighted with all of the live streaming, particularly, as you said, majority of them are crown tourneys that are coming out now and yep. watching from the sidelines being that, that sideline watching from the other yeah. side of the world yeah it's <laughs> quite interesting and it's, it's hard enough to know what's going on when you're right there yeah and and i think a part of it is that remembrance that it's the the people who are in the list field are the ones who are, are judgment are, are the ones judging each other and yeah. in respect to those blows and it comes back to those rules of the lists and mm. and everything on the flip side as well, it's probably worth noting that, you know, the only coin that we play with in the SCA is our social currency. So if you were not concerned about people watching you during Crown Tournament before, you probably <laughs> should have been anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Well, I and it is also yeah. a, that communication is paramount now and the remembrance that it's basically the social contract between the fighters. If they work it out between themselves. Yeah. That's it. Because as a combatant, you always have options to communicate and to stress that you thought something was good. And if you're not willing to do that, then that's a breach in the social contract as well. There needs to be communication so that everyone's happy at the end of the day. That it's such a long conversation. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. That, that, that was one of those things I was going to mention is like somebody is going to make a sketchy um, blow calling decision in Crown. Uh, they're going to do that whether they're on film or not. Yeah. And I've had that happen before where I was the person who I questioned something, got an answer and went, fair enough. And then someone brought it up after the fact and went, oh, aren't you mad about that? I went, no, I huh. do not. It, what happened happened. I'm not going to change it. I don't care. It's fine. 
you know and it was well, worked out and i think before sorry, you i think it. that that's what it comes down to is it's it's like any rumor you hear um honestly it's if you have a question about something seek out those fighters and ask them don't make assumptions don't make up your own story go to the source and they mm-hmm. will tell you how they feel about it and let that be the end of it yeah one of the things that uh is uh i i'm very proud of lockout doing and i'm not sure if it's the same across other kingdoms but if there is an issue on the list field it stays on the list field as soon as you walk out of the, that that field then it's resolved so if you have that problem you do it then if it isn't resolved you go and chat to that person afterwards, but you don't carry that baggage with you. I would really hope that for the most part, that's true across, across the society. Um, again, can't speak for anybody else, um, but I think that we see that here as well. Um, and or if there is a continued issue that you go to if they're an unbelted fighter, you go to their knight. And if they are a belted fighter, you go to, or I should say, if they're a peer, you go to their peerage. Hmm. Absolutely. I think, yeah, like I said, you know, it, if there's a continued problem that affects your renown as well. Um, but I feel like that's the exception rather than the rule. Yes, definitely. Well, I mean, you know, everybody's going to miss a shot here and there. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. And I've, I've had, I've had crowns that I've been in where if I didn't go my way and somebody asked, well, what about that? And like, you know, is it possible that he, that he, that he might've miscalled that? Sure. It's possible. Do I feel like I got cheated? No, not by any stretch, you know, well, well, miss them. Are we, you know, you make the calls, the calls the best you can. Absolutely. So I want to take a little bit of a shift and ask you a little bit about your kingdom. So how does the, the spirit or flavor of Artemisia differ from other kingdoms, do you think? The ones that you visit? I got this. I got this. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I have to say we pride ourselves on being home. Uh, when, when out of kingdom travelers come, we repeatedly hear that they feel like they're home. And we pride ourselves on that as a kingdom. Um, we are stretched 12, 12 hours, 12 yeah. hours across, yeah. um, but we are all family. Not to say, just as any other family, we bicker um, and we can have, have disagreements, but the beauty of it is, is that in the end, we end up going to each other when something comes up to say, I know that you have a different opinion than I do on this. Generally, we don't agree on things. I want to hear what you have to say. Um, And we have households here, but in in the end, again, we are all family. We are all extended family sometimes, but we are all family. And I love that about Armija. Yeah, that's the thing I tell everybody when they they come here and like, like she said, it happens all the time. People are, just tell us how much this feels like what the SCA should be. And we always say, welcome home. Um, and it's, you know, I mean, there, there are a lot of kingdoms that have reputations for, you know, not, not being as welcoming uh, to outsiders. Um, and it's just always remarkable to me. It's, and it's like, it's just a, a body of evidence that tells us this because we have people from all over the world that come here and they're like, this just feels like home. Um, and, you know, I'm like, yeah, that's what we do. Um, it's just, we're all very welcoming and inviting. And yes, we have our differences. Um, you know, I mean, every kingdom's got their, got their problems in, in kingdom. Um, but I can tell you, I, I am constantly, you know, when, when something flares up in another kingdom, um, you know, I just look at some of those folks that are that are in our kingdom that that do have differing opinions um, than we do and, and just appreciate so much more how we can have a difference of opinion without having conflict and without having adversaries, really. Um, you know, we don't all travel in the same circles, but, you know, we don't, we're, we don't really have enemies, right? 
And you get people that are doing things a different way and that's fine. In fact, I mean, that's one of the things that, that we love about um, our, our kingdoms, customs and traditions. Um, there are some ki- kingdoms where like you, thou, felt, thou shalt follow the script and thou shalt not deviate from the script for pain of anathema. Um, and then you've got this, you know, you got your book of ceremonies and if you don't follow the script, then, you know, then, then we'll be tied. Um, but we, we love seeing how people do things differently. Um, you know, the, even the, the fieltios are, are written, um, like our, our crown oath and, um, was, I wrote that one, um, coming into this, um, I also got my Pelican that morning. And so I wrote my Pelican oath as well. And, um, we basically, I had pulled those oaths like straight from Kabora, right. Kabora, you know, duties and responsibilities of the crown. It's like, this is what the crown shall do. And so we swore to our populace that we would do that. Right. Um, but we get to do that. We get to, we get to emphasize those, those things. And we love watching people step up in with different theater and with different personas and uh, you know their their own story right um we had our our previous reign we were followed by well we followed the mongols and then we were followed by the mongols as well and um you know the the oath that that yuri and samaya had when they when they came in was like it was mongol inspired um and their their whole coronation ceremony was you know was was the transition from the you know we, we did kind of a kind of a Viking rain in the last one or Norse rain. And um, they kind of followed that up. Uh, and it was, you know, finding that transition from rain to rain and seeing how they're going to, they're going to do that. It's something that our kingdom just loves. Um, we, we, everybody gets their own different kind of theater um, and it's super fun. We love that. Um, and so, yeah, we are all, all doing things differently, but we're all basically getting back to the, back to the same place. And, and don't get us wrong. We we have times when you know, in general, there's going to be conflicts. There's there's going to be times that we don't all get along. We're family, right? Um, but I think overall, in the end, we really truly support each other. Um, and I think it's very rare that that anyone reigning or doing a 10 years baron and baroness or doing an officer um, position would be completely terrified of asking someone outside their circle for help, um, unless it's their own personal thing. But um, we have the opportunity to ask for different opinions. And um, like Sean was saying, I love that every reign is different. I cannot wait to see what Sarah and Gabe do. Um, I love that we have this youth, this second. Yeah, they're both second second generation. generation, um, Crown coming in, they both are. So they're he's he's a knight. She's a laurel. Um, His uh, dad, uh, Robert Magnus, was king of the Outlands, and her mom, uh, Esther, was queen of Artemisia. So not only are they second gen SCA, they're also second gen royalty, um, and they're they're young and they're new crowns for us. And um, you know, while while we still felt that we needed some experience for this particular reign that we're in, um, we think that they are exactly what this kingdom needs. Um, we need new and we need young, and they have, you know, they they have an experience um, individually and collectively that really uh, belies their their youth. Um, so they're they're still they're still under thirty. So I know that may not seem young to a lot, but um, it's a fairly <laughs> young crown. Right? Yeah. Well, and I'm so excited. Like I think when we were talking about retention and um, also newcomers, this is this is amazingly awesome, right? It is awesome to know that if some young people come in and it's their first event and they see this young crown. And they see the excitement of the kingdom for this crown. And I'm just, I'm excited, can you tell? <laughs> it's I, I am, I'm so excited. And, and it's not that we thought, I just want to make it really clear. I did not doubt that if Gabe had won this last crown that Sean won instead, that they couldn't have done this reign. They totally could have done this reign. They have all the support. 
and they would have been fine. Um, I'm super excited to see them do this next reign because I would really like to have them have this amazing, beautiful, everything it should be reign um, without as much business, if at all possible. And that was one of the things that Sarah had said. It was, you know, it's like you, you made a little gr- little girl's dream come true because um, Sarah was uh, babe in arms at the first crown tourney when I was in the finals of crown. Um, so she was on site, uh, maybe, a, maybe a toddler. She was maybe two years old, two or three years old. So she's been around the kingdom from, from the beginning. And yeah, she said, thanks for making a little girl's dream come true. And for her to have the full five months that we usually have to kind of get ready for coronation. I guess she's, she's a Laurel. She specializes in German costuming. So she wants to, she wants to go all out, right. For her to have that time to be able to do that and to be able to have their, their dream coronation that you wanted, you know, for that, that first time that that you, that you have crown, you know, um, I, I lovingly refer to coronation as your wedding day. Yeah, that's exactly cool. It, it takes all of that organization. Yeah. There's costuming, there's decorations, there's ceremony, and, and it should be everything you want it to be. Organizing and, and the entourage and, yep. and yep. the household. And yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think it's to, have- to, to note that, you know, a young crown is not necessarily a bad thing. Like, how oh, old no. are you? Rain, Sean. Uh, my first reign, I was 28. Uh, well, I was 26 when I was prince, but I was 28 when I won my first crown. So yeah, I mean, we're we're no, we're excited. Like that's what I was saying. Yeah. Like we, we need, we need young crowns. Oh, I think um, that, yeah, we're mentioning for our, our wider audience. Like Felix and I were 23 when we first reigned, and yeah. we're hearing little whisperings because our our colleges are having a big uh, influx at the moment at least Good. in my local yeah. group. And one of the things that I've heard is that, you know, there seems to be kind of a middle kind of age group that the SCA maybe missed out on. And maybe that was when World of Warcraft yep. came out and everyone was yep. deciding to stay mm-hmm. home and gaming was better. But that absolutely you know, we, happened. We were, uh, oh, it's kind of hard because there's not that many, you know, young people. So it's actually really good to have that representation. And yep. people, you know, Crown is a hard job, but it's not unattainable for young people. So if yep. anybody is panicking going oh my goodness so-and-so is so young you go well it's it's a completely doable job there are yeah. actual monarchs that have ranged in history that were much oh, younger yeah. yes right exactly <laughs> we all started somewhere right like yeah. we weren't this old when we first reigned we're this old mm-hmm. now but <laughs> and i think i think that i we're super excited to um, see some new up and coming fighters, um, or at least new to our, our, um, kingdom. We need some new blood. And and this, this crown, um, three of the four finalists that we had in this, in this crown, in the semis, um, were three of the newest knights that we've made in our kingdom. Um, so yes, just super excited to see, um yeah new and young and fresh and it's you know it, it is Gabe and Sarah are exactly what we need right now excellent all right that's awesome thank you uh we're almost at the end of our time I actually have a question uh for Nissa and because Sean's already answered this <laughs> um what is one of your favorite moments that you've had across the SCA uh, that's hard um, I, I just love seeing, uh, one of my most recent, which you'll have to excuse me. I, I, I have an issue with memory. Um, so it's going to be something recent. Um, seeing Gabe win. Um, knowing that he was fighting for Sarah, that was really awesome. Um, seeing a picture that somebody took at coronation of the kids playing and all dressed in their garb and having a great time and seeing all the smiles. Those, those are the things that I love. Um, and that keep me going. Um, 
and also um no that pretty much covers it just just seeing seeing everybody having a good time seeing the smiles um okay i have one coronation we offered a gentleman um we were really fortunate two orders demanded him in and we were able to um let him know that we would like to have him join both of those orders and to be able to kneel down next to him um and support him in that moment and it was amazing um to feel his excitement to feel him be so overwhelmed but to know that he deserves this um and and that i and that we <laughs> but i <laughs> but um that we get to celebrate this with him and that we get to be part of something that he's worked so hard for yeah, it's pretty amazing that was one that we had like demand for that right after we won crown we had, we had people from both orders saying oh so are you going to do that one and we're like i don't know i just got here and then um <laughs> and then at evening court when we when we finally decided to do it after taking uh we're counsel from the laurels and the pelicans um, and it turned out he was the autocrat for the for coronation as well. So that's a handy excuse to have him up in, in court. And um, well, he was it, it, so he does magic. Um, he's a magician. He's a magician. He does period magic. And when we reigned before, he was our bard, um, our kingdom bard. And he took that and ran with it. He did some amazing things with that position that I've not seen done before. Um, and to be able to be part of getting to celebrate that and see him be offered this peerage is, is something that this is why we keep putting these crowns on our heads. Um, this is why I keep saying yes to Sean. Um, cause it's certainly not the, the, it's, it's not the yucky parts, right? It's the parts where you get to make people cry and smile. Yeah, we'd, we'd called up the laurels and he just turned into a blubbering mess and she was down next kneeling down next to him telling him to breathe and i'm just standing there like oh man we still got to tell him we're offering him another peerage <laughs> <laughs> I was like, we're, we're gonna totally wreck him um so yeah it was yeah, just watching the emotion and you know his wife who doesn't really play she was she was there on site he didn't know it um and so yeah being able to yeah, being able to have him a, a blubbering, puddly mess right there in front of us for all the right reasons, um, and knowing that it was demanded by those orders, and that you know we've taken counsel from those orders and know that his body of peers want him uh, to be among both their orders. Um, it's just powerful stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, thank yeah. you so much. <laughs> you had thank you for having us. Oh, I was just going to do the, before we go, was there any, anything that you want to say that we haven't touched on? I know I'm, I'm the time constraint today, so I didn't want to, <laughs> if there is anything that you didn't touch on that you'd like to say or express, now's your, your time. I know you have your own platforms, but <laughs> go for it. Got anything? I, I don't know. No, we just want to thank you for having us on again, me again, or for the first time um thanks for having us on uh, it's been del delightful and again we really appreciate what you guys have done during the pandemic um to keep us all connected across the globe um not just there in lockock um and having having so many of us on um and, and sharing sharing these experiences and these stories what you guys are doing is, is super important to uh to to keeping the sea alive right now thank you thank you thank you, it thank you. Amazing. It's been amazing to, to chat with you both and get to know you a little bit more and um, and for the populace and, and the known world to get to know who the Crown of Artemisia are. Thank you. Thank Happy you for this here. opportunity. Thank you again, Your Majesties. And I believe that next week we will be speaking with Baron Agro and Baroness Glenova, who, correct me if I'm wrong, B, were the first Baron and Baroness of the Barony of Riverhaven. No, they were the second. But Glenavar was the founder of Riverhaven. So they are 
are very long time players uh, and we will be speaking with them on Friday night. Fantastic. So again, thank you, your majesties. Thank you, thank you. B, and thank you to our awesome tech Magnus for being yeah. in the background. And we will see you all again next week. All righty. Thanks guys.